<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cheap Heat. Um, that wasn't me, that was not my turntable here, but that's how the record starts. This is a video series in which I talk about uh, inexpensive records that, that shred, or even better than shred, that are fantastic, but you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to get them. Might need to invest a little time, might need to pay a little postage. But other than that, um, these are relatively inexpensive. We're talking between five and fifteen dollars for the most part. What we're listening to right now, listen to the whole second side, is uh, no first side is this Chris Martin for ladies only. It's a private issue record from Belgium, and uh, it caught my eye on Discogs. Uh, I was doing something on Discogs, I don't know what, and I ran across this guy and. It said he's the Belgian uh, Steve Tibbetts. And while he's not really, he has some things in common with Steve Tibbetts. He has curly, long hair, and he has a guitar. And he can really play the guitar. He's not really like Steve Tibbetts. But this is a great album. And um, it's really not expensive for a private issue, um, mostly instrumental, jamming, psyche rock record. It's, uh, it's really cheap. So check it out. Chris Martin for Ladies Only. I really like this one. Um, okay, we're gonna hop right into it. A lot of guitarists in this uh, video. Hope I don't go through these too fast, but I got a lot of records here. So the next guy I'm gonna talk about is from France, not Belgium. It's Alan Marcusfeld. And uh, this is his uh, third album. It's called Le Desert Noir, The Black Desert. It's on the Egg label. His first two records are um, pretty hard to find and pretty rare and pretty expensive. This thing uh, is pretty common and uh, won't set you back more than 10 bucks probably. This is an exceptionally good record. Um, it's just uh, Marcus Feld who plays all instruments, guitar, bass, keyboards, and a drummer. And um, it's it's just a really good instrumental progressive rock slash fusion uh, psychedelic tinged record. It's really great. Uh, it's really my favorite record by him. And I have them all, so <laughs> this is my favorite one by him. Uh, Alan Marcus Feld, Le Desert Noir. It's on the Egg label. Um, he did a couple of follow ups. Um, this is the immediate successor to Le Desert Noir. It's called Platoc. And this has got no drums on it. It's uh, just Alan Marcus Feld on guitars and keyboards. And uh, Jean Schultheis, who's a pretty well-known uh, French session musician on uh, mallet percussion and percussion. And then uh, I guess his wife, Patricia, on vocals. She just like sings wordless vocals. Very nice. I'm just here and there, not through the whole thing. This is much more spacey, much more laid back, a very nice Sunday morning sort of vibe to it. Um, I like it quite a bit. It's got some electronic uh, freakage on it for sure, but uh, it's kind of spacey. I like it a lot. It's much more laid back than Le Desert Noir and definitely worth checking out. Um, another great French guitar player who's uh, always been a favorite of mine, um, seen him live actually here in Santa Fe. Um, fairly recently, Pierre Bensuzan. And he's, you know, basically a, a advanced Celtic folk kind of guitarist. But the thing about him is he's got a couple of records um, where he plays with other musicians and they get kind of out there. And uh, this is probably the most out one he did. It's his second record titled Pierre Bensuzan 2. And uh, Gilbert Artman from Lard Free is on one track even. And uh, this is just a really cool record, really quirky, not straight folk by any stretch. And uh, of course, Pierre Bensouzan is a great singer, great guitar player. All the vocals are in French. Um, plays trad stuff as well as his own material. It's a really nice record. Um, this was somewhat later. This is just him. But um, uh, it's also very, very nice and can be had for next to nothing. I used to have a record that's just duets with him and uh, Pierre Malherbe, no, DDA Malherbe from Gong on reeds. 
and um, that's called Sololai. All these things were uh, reissued in the U.S., so you can find them domestically or imports. These are both imports, but uh, really worth checking out, especially this one. I like this one a lot. Uh, Pierre Ben Suzanne too. Another great guitar player from uh, the, the other world, the non-jazz, non-rock world, is Sabikas. He's a great flamenco guitar player, um, really well known, uh, especially in the 60s, when he did these records with a jazz guitar player named Joe Beck, who uh, was on a lot of the CTI records. And I always thought he was kind of a smooth jazz guitarist, but if you really look into his session work and some of the other things he's done, he's actually done a lot of really challenging and interesting stuff. And uh, this is one of the best things he did. It's uh, called Sabikas Rock Encounter, and it's credited to Joe Beck. And um, there's some great music on this. It's a really, it really should have been called Sabikas Jazz Rock Encounter because it's basically a jazz rock record with flamenco fr flourishes. And Sabikas is, is a wonderful player as well. And the whole thing just, it's a good blend. It's very, uh, it's very, all very compatible. And um, this could be had for next to nothing. I got this at the thrift store. And uh, if you look close, you can see the cut off. A nice saw cut there. Um, it looks like it's never been played. It's on the Polydor label, which uh, produced some fairly odd music in the early 70s, late 60s. Uh, but this is great. And there's a, actually a, another Sabikas rock record on a really small label that's really hard to find, unfortunately. But it, that's even I would say it's even better than this one. And I think it has more or less the same personnel. Um, but uh, some really good players on this, and it's not just two guitars, it's a it's a full band, and it's pretty much full on early jazz rock with flamenco mixed in. Another great guitar player, um, more from the blues world, who did a lot of uh, really interesting stuff, uh, Harvey Mandel. And um, really any of his records are worth getting um, his first couple were uh, definitely more in the blues jazz sort of realm. Uh, he would cover tunes by Charles Lloyd, Cannonball Adderley, people like that, uh, as well as do his own sort of trademark blues jams. Um, this is from the 70s, I think 73, the golden age of music, I always felt like. Uh, 1973 is like a magical year. Um, it's called Shing Grenade and it's on Janus Records. Um, this one set me back six bucks. Um, anyway, it's a great record and it's got great musicians on it. Um, uh, Sugar Kane Harris, the violinist from uh, Hot Rats is on this. And uh, the drummer Paul Lagos is on this. Lagos is a really fantastic drummer. Very polyrhythmic, it's got a great sound. Uh, Mandel kills. Um, he really has that legato uh, kind of feeling that sort of almost gets to the Holdsworth zone. But he's really kind of a blues guy more than anything else. But uh, this is all instrumental, I think, except for maybe one cut. Maybe maybe no cuts. Maybe there's no vocals on this at all. But uh, it's really my favorite record by him. And uh, most of his records are really inexpensive. But uh, this one's the primo one. And the first couple of ones he did, uh, Games Guitars Play and Cristo Redentor, are also worth seeking out. They're much more jazzy um, than fusion-y or, or jazz-rocky. Another guy who could play everything on guitar, um, who's done so much great music over the years, and um, he's still doing it, still really active, still a big name, is Henry Kaiser. And um, a lot of his records can be had for really cheap. This has always been one of my favorites. Again, it's sort of a jammy jazz rock record. It's called Marrying for Money, and it's Henry Kaiser with a bassist and a drummer and um, who are great, by the way, um, Hillary and John Haynes. And uh, mostly it's a trio, but on several tracks there are uh, second guitarists, and it's sort of a rotating cast of all-stars, uh, one being Glenn Phillips, who's done a bunch of really cool records, instrumental rock records over the years. He's on a track. Fred Marshall is on a track. I'm not really familiar with Fred Marshall, but based on his playing on this, I might have to look him up. Uh, John Abercrombie, the great jazz uh, guitar player, is on one track. And Amos Garrett, the great uh, folk blues guitar player, is on one track. So he really checks out uh, 
a lot of different musical areas, really touches all the bases on this, but uh, it's really driving, uh, kind of heavy, uh, rockish, jazzy. I would hesitate to call it fusion. It's like instrumental rockers with a jazz edge. I like this one a lot. It's from 1986, so it should be fairly easy to get, even though it came out on a uh, on an import label, Minor Music. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of trouble finding this. And it's really cheap. Well, now you can find everything online. I like to find stuff live, as I'm sure you do too, but online will do. And a lot of these records are cheap online. Uh, an associate, a close associate of Henry Kaiser's is this guy, Scott Colby. And a lot of you might not be familiar with him. He's a fantastic slide guitar player, plays exclusively slide guitar. And uh, this is his first solo record on SST, another wonderful label uh, out of Lawndale, California. Got this at Amoeba for three bucks back in the day. No, two bucks back in the day. And this is another 80s record from uh, 87. But this has a fantastic drummer on it. The main reason why I got this, um, well, it's instrumental. But <laughs> the other main reason why I got this is as this great drummer named Mark Crawford on it, who was also in Kaiser's band. And uh, really enjoyed this one over the years. Some great tunes on it, all original tunes. Um, mostly uh, drums, bass, guitar trios, a couple of solo guitar tracks, and a couple of tracks with an expanded lineup with horns and whatnot. Um, really a cool record, though. And uh, I like this a lot. There's some blues, some rock, some jazzier type stuff. But um, if you like Henry Kaiser, you'll dig this. And he's a fantastic player. Uh, here's another guy that he only did this one album that I know of. And um, I don't know what he's doing now. Tommy Broman, um, Swedish guitarist, definitely in the Yanni Schaffer uh, mold where he was a kind of a session guy, I think. Um, plays uh, kind of the same sort of funky jazz rock fusion that Yanni Schaffer tended to do back in the 70s. And he's also got uh, Yanni Schaffer's alter ego, Bjorn Jason Lind, uh, producing and playing keyboards and flute on this. This is a really cool record. Again, it's an import, but it's really cheap. It'll be even cheaper if you're in Europe. Um, you'll have to pay more money in postage to get it over here if you're in the States or anywhere else for that matter. But uh, basically it's just a core quartet, uh, guitar, bass, drums, and keys with occasional flute and then guests rotating in and out on rhythm guitar, congas and, uh, and uh, tablas, those Indian drums, and also uh, violin. So really cool record though. And I'd say about two thirds of it is sort of in that Yanni Schaffer, uh, funky jazz rock vein and then the rest of it is like instrumental rockers kind of and almost a country sounding sort of bucolic rustic sort of type of uh, instrumental rock um, really nice record though a nice gatefold jacket with photos that you can gaze at lovingly while you listen to the music but uh, Broman was in a band called Lavande Livet that uh, and their one record sells for a lot of money but uh, this can be had for like five euros, 10 euros, something like that. Really nice record, Tommy Broman. And the title of the record is After Midnight. I know I'm mangling that, I don't speak Swedish, but I'm guessing it means after midnight in, uh, if, if it's transliterated. But I'm just guessing, just guessing there. Okay, getting back to um, uh, domestic releases. Um, this is an album by a group who did two records on Vanguard um, in the 70s. And uh, they've been in and out of my collection over the years. Uh, the group's uh, Flying Island. And, um, and, and they're quite good. I I'm liking it now. <laughs> I'm probably going to hang on to this copy for a while. This is their second one. It's called Another Kind of Space. And uh, really interesting personnel. Bill Bacon is the drummer on this. And he was, um, if you might recall, he was the original drummer in uh, New York Gong and in Curlew. And he was also in Material. Um, I don't know what he's doing now, but he's done a lot of work in sort of like the uh, quirky, squonky jazz rock realm. This is not quirky or squonky. It's kind of progressive rock meets uh, fusion. Um, it's a really cool record. There's some cheesy moments, but I'd say a good 80% of this is really solid listening. And I like it a lot. And the the 
the lineup is the instrumentation is the same as Mahavishnu with a violin added to the basic uh, bass, drums, guitar, and uh, keyboards lineup. Um, all original tunes. Uh, DJ Shadow famously sampled one of the tracks from this. You'll recognize it. You'll be listening to this and you'll be like, where have I heard that before? It's on introducing uh, Shadow's first record. And uh, you're like, oh my God. So yeah, it kind of shocked me. Even though I was prepared for it, it kind of shocked me. It's like, where have I heard this before? It's driving me crazy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> anyway, um, the, gu the guitarist is Ray Smith. He's quite good. Um, he's gone in to do mostly production. Um, Jeff Bova on keyboards. I think he plays a little trumpet on this as well. Um, he was also in sort of the material New York gong uh, orbit, but I think he moved out to California or something like that. He's got like hundreds of credits, of mostly production and session credits. And uh, yeah, it's just a really solid record musically. I like it a lot. And I'm, now I'm after the first one, which is also cheap, both on the Vanguard label. Here's a record that I always felt got uh, unjustly neglected. It's El Shankar's first solo record. It's on Zappa Records, uh, Frank Zappa's label. Uh, when After he severed his relationship with uh, Warner Brothers, he moved over to uh, Mercury. And I believe part of the agreement was that he had his own uh, uh, sub subsidiary, sub-label, whatever you want to call it. And um, this is really good. It's got such a great band. Phil Palmer on guitar. Of course, El Shankar on all manner of violas and violins. Um, Dave Marquis on bass. I think he was in Greenslade. Um, Simon Phillips on drums. The great, great, great Simon Phillips. I basically would buy or listen to anything that Simon Phillips did. Um, James Laskells on keyboards. He was in a... a group called the Global Village Trucking Company um, and Zappa himself does a cameo vocal on this under the name uh, Stucco Holmes it's a really cool record it's, I'd say it's about 50% vocals 50% instrumentals but um, it's solid all the way through I really like this one a lot it could be had for next to nothing um, I really like it a lot so it's called Touch Me There by El Shankar Here's a record that just shocked the heck out of me. It's a real sleeper. Um, it's by a guy from Wisconsin named Sigmund Snowpeck III. And he had a band for a while called Snowpeck. And they're always sort of that um, American brand of progressive rock, kind of like Crack the Sky. Um, sort of a cross between album-oriented rock and progressive rock. And um, I bought this on a whim. It was a buck. Um, it could be had on Discogs for more or less a buck or two. I believe. Um, it's on his own small label, I think. The Mountain Railroad record label. Um, anyway, it's fantastic. It, it blew me away. I'd heard his other records before. I'd found some in the thrift store, actually, and sold them. Because they were like the kind of things that I think of as being good, not great. This record kills, though. It's a uh, Zappa-esque, uh, off-the-wall, bizarre, progressive rock, uh, magnum opus, all... Uh, no holds barred on this one. Uh, side long track and then on one side and then two very long tracks on the other side. Uh, great band. It's uh, his working band. He's had more or less the same people in his band for years. Um, don't recognize any of their names, but I just, just except from the other Snowpack records. Uh, on one track or one side. Yeah, on one track. Uh, Warren Weigratz plays um, saxophones. He was in um, Sweet Bottom, who I've discussed earlier in an earlier edition of this uh, blathering. But um, Sweet Bottom's definitely a good band to check out, good fusion band from Milwaukee with the Sturmer Brothers. And uh, this is great though. This isn't fusion though. This is straight up, uh, I would say it's symphonic progressive rock. It's quirky progressive rock. Zappa, Gentle Giant, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, Canterbury mixed in. Uh, you get the picture. It's not uh, it's not Genesis or Yes or anything like that. It's, it's really good. Check it out. The name of the record, let me just reiterate it, Roy Rogers meets Albert Einstein. So there you go great record. I think there's a lengthy track on there that's like a, a Baroque classical duet between the flute and, uh, and Snowpack on, I think, piano, but I'm not sure. 
or may, it might just be solo flute. So it's 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 odd, but great, but great. Um, more conventional, but no less wonderful to listen to is this uh, album by the only album by the group Public Foot the Roman, self-titled. Not quite sure what the title means, but um, I bought this at a shop in Florida, and the guy just had a lot of like sort of marginal prog records for like between three and five bucks a piece. And um, I just bought a bunch of them when I was last there, like a handful, like seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And most of them I wound up flipping or giving away or trading or not keeping. Um, this is the one that stayed with me though. It's really excellent. And uh, somebody on Discogs perfectly described the record. They said it sounds like uh, a cross between Wishbone Ash and Yes. And that is exactly what this sounds like to me as well. Um, there's two guitar players and they do the Wishbone Ash dual lead thing. Um, some of the music's a little, uh, got sort of a country rustic feel to it. Kind of Almond Brothers-ish with the two guitars. Uh, but it's by no means simple. And most of it's really, really definitely progressive rock. Um, I like this record a lot. Kind of like Rare Bird maybe too in spots, but Rare Bird never had a guitar player until later. So I don't know, you, you, you get it, you make up your mind. Uh, great record. The group um, with a few minor personnel adjustments later on became a group called The Movies. Uh, they had much more successful in uh, the UK in the late 70s. This is from 73, I think, or 72. 73, the, again, the magic year of music. Um, and then the movies, um, a couple more personnel adjustments, they became a group called Sniff in the Tears and had a big uh, hit. Uh, two more things to talk about. The record is over. I will try to get through these really quick. Um, if you like Coliseum and horn rock, jazzy horn rock, you should check this out. Dick Hextall Smith was with uh, Coliseum for years. Um, original member. Um, was also in Jack Bruce's band for a while. Played with Graham Bond. Um, he was on Jack Bruce's album Things We Like with John McLaughlin. Fantastic record. Um, this is his solo record. A story ended. The U.S. press will not set you back much money at all. And it's got amazing personnel. If you like Coliseum or If or any of those, um, you know, really kind of proggy, jazzy, horn rock uh, bands, you're going to love this if you don't already know it. Paul Williams is on it, the singer from Holdsworth's group. Um, Mark Clark, John Heisman, Dave Greenslade, Graham Bond, uh, Chris Spedding, Gordon Beck, Chris Philo. It's just a really great record. And of course, Dick Hextall Smith playing a lot of double saxophone. Finally, to wrap things up, a record I left out of my Canadian uh, selection from a couple months back, Myriador. Um, this is a great uh, French-Canadian trio, saxophones, uh, keyboards and drums. The saxophone is doubles on extra keyboards, so there's lots of keyboards. Um, it's not spare sounding at all. Uh, you don't miss the bass because one of the keyboards is playing the bass on a sequencer, I think. Really cool, really dark, um, gothic sort of universe zero type uh, music. Complicated, um, yet totally uh, approachable in a um, you know, you could just listen to this anytime. I really like this record a lot. One of the great bands from Canada, all instrumental, um, highly recommended on the great Cuneiform record label who's done so much great music over the years. Anyway, the music is over. I have overstayed my welcome. I am out. Um, I'll come right back at you with some more uh, uh, unheralded, unknown, and cheap music uh, shortly. Thanks for listening.